the Bulldogs completely dominated game three, shutting out the Commodores for the first seven innings. Thanks, Maggie. Out here at Swayze Field, where the Rebels are about halfway through conference play, but they are in desperate need of a series win. They haven't had one since last March, but that's not to say that they haven't been very productive the last few weekends, especially since they're the number 19 team in the country. The Ole Miss-Mississippi State rivalry always promises to be a fun one, but especially when it's a top 10 matchup with a lot on the line. The series starts tonight down in Starkville at Duty Noble. Bulldogs have won the last four series over their rival, but Ole Miss looking to change those fortunes starting with a win tonight. Trailing 1-0 in the third, but with runners on first and second. Peyton Chagnier with a sharp grounder to the left side. Lane Versailles can't field it cleanly. Cale Baker chugging all the way around from second to tie it up. Later in the inning, Rebels with a chance to break it open. Base is loaded, but Christian McLeod gets Hayden Dunhurst to chase to the end of the inning. One of five strikeouts on the day for McLeod. This was not one of them, though. In the fourth, TJ McCants with a blast over the wall in right. Solo shot puts the Rebs up 2-1 for their first lead of the day. But in the bottom half of the inning, the Bulldogs answering right back. Cameron James with a solo shot of his own. His team high eighth home run of the season ties this game right back up. This was a game that was back and forth all afternoon. It's such a big win for you guys in conference play. What ultimately worked in the second half? Well, just our Camara only had to miss one game due to COVID-19, thankfully, and Michael Thomas back too after missing over a month with an ankle injury. Picking up right where he left off, though, with the first touchdown of the day, and cue the slime cannons, bringing me back to my childhood tonight. The Saints offense living out every kid's dream getting slimed. You mentioned that record crowd earlier. I think that had a lot to do with Mississippi State's success here in Omaha. I mean, it was truly incredible. All you could see in the crowd was maroon and white shirts everywhere. You could hear them loud and proud. That field a very special place with one of a kind energy and of course one of a kind fans. One of them being the candy man. If you've been to a game in Starkville, he's impossible to miss. Also known as Ron Caulfield, he makes his rounds all around Duty Noble, giving out candy to fans big and small. You guys were talking about his impressive 40 time at the Kennesaw State Pro Day. So here he is. I'm down here with Darnell Holland, and we're going to do some fun rapid fire questions. Darnell, are you ready? And of course, it's tailgate time. I'm joined here by Tracy and Pete. Now, Tracy is actually from Jackson, Mississippi. Pete is from right here in Omaha, Nebraska, and they've been friends for over 10 years. After a thrilling game yesterday, Southern Miss forced the Oxford Regional to a final game with Ole Miss to happen today in a winner take all. After a few rain delays, this one is turning out to be another crazy one. Let's send it out to Trey Mongrew out in Oxford. Trey, how much fun are you having at Swayze Field right now? Ole Miss giving the world a free bloom and onion today. So it's not just the Rebels enjoying the victory, but us here at WLBT too. The chance to make a statement on ESPN, but most importantly, the chance to get back in the win column after two weeks. The Tiger offense took nearly the entire first half to get anything started. And when they did, things were few and far between. Jackson State baseball team went into this year wanting more. After last season was canceled due to the pandemic, they wanted to make this one count. Before they knew it, the Tigers were on their way to an undefeated conference season. And then they did that. That quickly became a distant memory heading into the SWAC tournament because their 24-0 record doesn't really matter unless they finish the job. Today, one game stands between them and a perfect season, the championship. So what was your initial reaction when coach said, Santa, you're in? That was coach Robbie's response when I asked him what it would mean to be able to win a state championship for Officer Ray this year. That opportunity for the Jaguars starts tomorrow against Northwest Rankin, but no matter how Madison Central season ends, 2021 was for C. Ray, and we'll continue to keep him in our thoughts and prayers. Well, if you know anything about Coach Prime, it's that he does not lack confidence. And with yesterday's win over Grambling State, that's now true for his team as well. Coming into this matchup, Grambling had not lost a game at home since 2015. And JSU had not beaten them in nearly 10 years. Talked about earlier just how resilient these Bulldogs have been all year. And look at them now. It's been such an exciting one for state fans. And hey, we talked to head dogs coach Chris three. Monis. Yeah, dogs in three. Dogs in go. three. We talked to head coach Chris Lamonis after the game last night. He just wanted the team to be competitive. And I'd say that's exactly what they're doing right now. One adjustment so far started at quarterback. Quincy Casey will get the start for Saturday's homecoming matchup against Alabama A&M.